over the last few weeks, I've received a lot of questions about humidity and temperature when it comes to comic book storage. And if I'm being honest, I've actually received these questions off and on for years, but I've never actually addressed them in a formal video. But now we are going to change that. Stay tuned. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about temperature and humidity when it comes to comic book storage. These are two topics that are not sexy in any way, shape, or form, but are crucial aspects to consider when you want to have a healthy comic book collection. Inappropriate levels of either temperature or humidity can contribute significantly to the deterioration of comics. Heat increases chemical reactions that can break down paper. High humidity can encourage mold growth and pest activity, while low humidity can lead to paper becoming brittle, peeling, and or curling. But the question is, what are the appropriate levels that you should be aiming for? Because I'm not an expert, I took some time to actually do some research. And what I hope to do over the course of this video is to share those findings with you so that you can draw your own conclusions. One of the first things that I did was to look for the optimal humidity level within a house. And according to the Mayo Clinic, the optimal level for good health is somewhere between 30 to 50%. While that may hold true for people, the question is, does it hold true for paper as well? And so to that point, I actually did a lot of research looking at different organizations' websites to see what they suggested for maintaining paper-based collectibles. What I will tell you is that all of these organizations had slightly different interpretations and slightly different takes on the optimal humidity level and the optimal temperatures to aim for. So what I'll do is to share the information with you and then maybe try to summarize it at the end again so that you can draw your own conclusions from this. Before we dig into those individual findings, what I wanna do is to very quickly without getting into the weeds, define relative humidity. And I wanna do this because all of these resources reference relative humidity. A relative humidity, or RH, is expressed as a percentage. It's essentially a measure of how much water vapor is in the water-air mixture compared to the maximum amount possible. And as mentioned, too little or too much humidity can lead to less than desirable outcomes. So in a moment, I want to dig into the individual references that I looked at. But generally speaking, what they seem to recommend was relative humidity that is less than 50% but higher than 30%. When it comes to temperature, it seems like a temperature of 68 degrees or less is optimal. One of the first places that I went to was the Smithsonian. They have responsibility for a lot of important historical documents, so I felt like this was a good place to start. The recommended environmental standard for paper-based collections, according to the Smithsonian, is 35 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 to 50% relative humidity. Next up, I looked at the American Library Association, which actually has some recommendations that are specific to comics. They say that you should store comics in a clean storage area where temperature and relative humidity are moderate and stable. 68 degrees Fahrenheit or less in terms of temperature and between 30 and 40% relative humidity. Next, I went to the Library of Congress, and to be honest, I was not impressed with what I found there. They didn't have any guidance specific to comics, not that I expected it, but also their guidance on paper-based collections was also a little generic in my opinion. With that said, what they recommended is that you store paper-based collections in a cool space that is room temperature or below and that is relatively dry and they define that as about 35 percent relative humidity one of the other things that i wanted to do was to try to figure out what standards museums might try to hold themselves to because again these are oftentimes archives of massive collections that are made up of wood, paper, metal, and other types of materials. So I wanted to see what standard they hold themselves to. And I actually found 
a decent reference for this on the Northern States Conservation Center website. And what they essentially highlighted is that museums have their relative humidity at 45% and the gallery temperature between 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I found another resource that kind of explained how it is that museums think about their collections and also their customers. What they stated is that cultural institutions must compromise between the temperatures that are best for the preservation of the collection, what is economical in terms of equipment and energy policies, and what's best for the comfort of staff, researchers, and visitors. The long and short of it is that museums try to find a balance. And what I mean by that is that a lower temperature for a collection is probably a good thing. Not too low, but lower than maybe what is comfortable for a person. But if they were to push the, the temperature much lower, it would potentially cost them a lot of money to be able to do that, maybe more than what they want to spend. And let's be honest, it's not a great experience if you are either working in a museum or walking through a museum and you are literally freezing the entire time. So a lot of it comes down to balance. With that said, it seems like if you have a collection and you are storing that collection inside of where you actually reside, where there is an HVAC system with heat and also with central air, your collection probably is going to be in a very good place. I recognize that people live in areas where the humidity might actually be a little high. So you could have a moderate temperature, but a lot of humidity. And so if you find yourself in a situation like that, you may actually want to look at installing or using a dehumidifier unit. Many dehumidifiers have built in monitors that tell you exactly how much humidity is in the air, but you can also use digital hydrometers to monitor the humidity and you can adjust your dehumidifier unit to reach those optimal levels that I mentioned earlier. And again, those optimal levels of relative humidity seem to be below 50%, but above 30%. So now that we've spoken about temperature and humidity, I want to offer up some other tips and pointers as it relates to comic book storage. My hope is that these tips and pointers may actually help some folks out there. If you have comics, you absolutely want to store those comics upright. And generally speaking, the best way to do this is to buy a proper comic book storage box that is made of either paper slash cardboard or plastic. If you are unable to maintain your relative humidity below 80%, you might want to avoid plastic as you could have some condensation builds up inside of that plastic. And in those situations, you definitely want to try to address that relative humidity level, but you also will probably want to use the paper or cardboard based storage boxes. Another tip that I saw as I was doing this research is that many of these institutions suggested that people avoid places where there could be these large swings in temperature in a relatively short period of time. This includes places like attics, basements, crawl spaces, or garages where your HVAC system is not covering those areas. You will have some big swings in temperature and that could negatively impact your collection as well as potentially expose it to moisture. With that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video. This video is one of several that I've been doing as of late in which I am looking at different aspects of comic book preservation and protection. If you haven't seen those videos, I will put a link down in the description for you to check them out. I think that individually and collectively, these videos are extremely helpful. So take a moment and watch them if you have the time. If you enjoyed this video, I want to encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're feeling frisky, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And that way you won't miss out on any of the content I release. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so. And you can do it on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. This thing on. Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yeah. Should you practice art?
or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know? The one that's gonna be a master. The one that's more than a rapper. The one that's an educator. The one that seeks enlightenment. He travels with concepts. He's got the mindset expansive. He overstands that it's time combined with travel and concepts. Makes his mind convex. Sort of like when you look at a brain scan. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we're in distinct rooms of pure souls having them conversations. Synergy and combinations. You fly and we waiting. Indian style and the gold.